You look awful, Doc. What happened? Doc, what the hell? Hi, Detective. Sorry I'm so late. You got some nerve. But who put you in these? You don't happen to have a key for them. And wait a second. I'll make you a drink first. That's better, yeah? Much better. Thanks. And now, tell me what happened. Two guys threw me off the dock, off the ferry pier. You're not exactly smooth operators. I was a little bit drunk. You are one lucky guy, Doc. <laughs> one hell of a lucky guy. Normally, no one would survive that. You see who it was? No, they put a bag over my head. Hmm. Well, let's just suppose this happened like you say. Then how can it be that in just a few days in New York, you've made those kind of enemies? I don't get it myself. Something's really wrong over there in that hospital on Staten Island. You think that someone in the hospital wanted to kill you? So I'm asking you, Doc, who then? The horrible lady? The doctor? Our relationship is not the best. He hates me, Detective. But he wouldn't kill you just out of professional rivalry. I think that's just fantasy. Have you had a falling out with anyone else? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, with my wife, uh, my best friend, with Steve Riker over there, with the hotel porter, uh, with you. Not bad. Okay, you're a trouble magnet. You could almost get to thinking you're bringing these things on yourself. You thought about that? I have this funny feeling that somebody's using me here, someone who's not happy with my investigations. Okay, Doc, let me talk straight. Hmm, one moment. Randall. Randall, would it be too much trouble for you not to eavesdrop for a moment? Sure, officer. Detective. So, that's better. Uh, where were we? Right. Your talent for troublemaking, Doc. You're not exactly an easy guy to get along with. Could it just be that you yourself have stirred up something over there? You know what? There are, in fact, one or two things about you which are not all that amusing. You want to hear? Carry on. Your hotel called us. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. What, what does that porter guy think he's doing? I'm not finished yet, Doc. Dr. Young also called. He's worried about his patients. Your patients. You've withdrawn all medication. You're putting his staff in danger. You're overstepping your authority. Is that true, Doc? What? He said that? That's... Can it be said that you're having problems, Doc? I mean, seriously. With yourself. Just tell me. What do you want? You want me to declare myself an official nutcase? I'm sure that fits quite nicely with your, uh, crazy shrink theory, I suppose, huh? Whose side are you on, I wonder? Not automatically on yours. I thought you understood that. I'm a cop. I'm on the side of the law. There's something I must tell you, what I've found out up to now. I'm pretty well convinced that these kids were in an army depot, or in a barracks. All the recollections point to this. The pictures are all the same, in every detail. And everything fits together exactly. But the army said no. We asked them and they said they had no bases matching that description, and no mothballed establishments. You must be wrong. It, it must be in your head, Doc. I'm not mistaken. Okay, then the recollections have to be wrong. With five crazy people, that's not entirely unlikely now, is it? How would it be if the uh, Army's information wasn't correct? You got some other findings? I mean, correct ones? The five had apparently all sat at computers together four days before they were admitted. Then, this must have led to some kind of conflict. Uh-huh. At computers. Hmm, that does happen at that age. You know, just ask my little nephew. He has the same kind of recollections, too. But not from four days ago, from just two hours ago. He's always playing this game where he's stealing cars and whacking cops. I had to take the damn thing and throw it out the window. But your nephew hasn't ended up running around town armed and naked, has he? And that's true. But he also doesn't sit in the funny farm fantasizing the whole day. So you don't believe my findings add up then, huh? I don't know, Doc. Would you believe them? I mean, you don't have anything. No evidence, no details, not one concrete trace. 
All you've been doing is listening to alleged recollections in which there are allusions to some vague thing. I've recorded everything. Listen to it yourself, and then decide. Let's hear it. No problem. I... darn. The PDA is completely soaked. <sighs> Moretti, I do have the recordings. I'll dry the PDA or else I'll get your guys to fix it up again. Then... then you'll be convinced. Okay, Doc. Okay, you do that. About the patient in cell two. Yeah, that's an unpleasant story, Doc. Like I told you, we'll have to investigate that more thoroughly. But that's a different case. And? What am I? Witness or suspect? For the time being, a witness. But that can change. I got to the ward and she was dead. I don't know how she could have managed to get so wounded like that. There wasn't a single object in her cell that could cause anything like that. I've got nothing to do with it. If that's how it is, then you've got nothing to fear. Where were you then when the girl died? In the hotel. And here. My God, of course I was the first in the hospital. I work there. Hmm. You'll put all this in your statement, right? You really don't believe I did anything to her, do you? Eh, yeah, Doc. If I thought that, then I certainly wouldn't still be letting you anywhere near Staten Island. To put it more precisely, I wouldn't even let you out of this bar. And you'd also be keeping those nice, chic little bracelets on, too. Well, anyway. I need help, Moretti. You gotta help me. I'm not sure if I'm the right guy for the kind of help you need. So, what are you suggesting here? Police protection? I don't really want to end up in the harbor again. You're joking. Do I look like I am? I was nearly killed, detective! And so you say. I just see a disturbed psychiatrist soaking wet in handcuffs. He goes crazy, wrecking his hotel room, always turns up to work late, and then just starts trouble the whole time. And I'm supposed to give you protection for that, Doc? So, that's how you see it. Okay, then give me a weapon. I'll defend myself. You? A weapon? Yeah, I don't think it's quite come to that yet. So you're not going to help me, then? No, not the way you want. No. Meridi, if you don't believe me, if you think I'm crazy, then just tell me. I'll get to the truth of my own. Okay. Two guys, yeah? At the ferry pier. Yeah. Two men. My wallet's lying at the bottom of the harbor, and uh, two empty bullet shells as well. Okay, maybe we can start with the handcuffs. I'll also send over a CSI team and a couple of divers. I can't give you police protection. We need every man we have on the beat, and I'd never get the request approved. That good enough for you? Yes, it is. And uh, with the hospital, Doc, I'd recommend you don't get into any kind of issues. Just make sure that you find out what's going on with those kids, and stop picking fights with people. Okay? And what's with the requisitioning of my files from the NSA? You're just being checked out. Routine for an ex-army guy. Okay, then. I have to go now, Doc. Keep me up to date on things. Don't drink so much. And, uh, keep that hotel room furniture in one piece. Yeah. Yeah, will do. Night, Detective. Good night, Doc. Randall? Yes? A double. Really sorry, Doc. So you were listening? A bit difficult to avoid completely. And you too, Racker? You're a tough cookie, Doc. Who'd have thought it? Are you having one? Maybe later. I need to sort things out. I'm not gonna let myself get drowned a second time. I've gotta go. I'll come back again sometime. Riker? Hmm? Riker, you've got that nice revolver, haven't you? What about it? I want to buy it. You serious? I'm serious. A hundred bucks? It's not too clever to go running around the neighborhood like some crazy ass. You ought to know. Not good for you, Doc. You're running out of adrenaline right now. I don't think my conscience will allow me. Conscience? <laughs> You're joking, right? Just drop it, Doc. If you go running around like some crazy idiot, then someone somewhere is going to end up dead. Two hundred bucks. I don't know, Doc. It's not good for you. Uh, what did you say there? Three hundred? Plus fifty for the shelves. Hey, Randall. Um, how's my tab doing? 
including today, uh, that's 970.45. That's including tax, by the way. <laughs> what? Your damn bar is too expensive. Ah, just drink less. So? All right. Best give the dough to that bloodsucker over there. I'd be happier if you paid with some other money. Riker's right, Doc. Weapons aren't the way to handle things. I think I'm the best judge of that. Confucius said, anyone who has a gun is gonna use it. I can't deny that. Here, take it. Okay. I gotta go, Randall. Will you chalk that up for me? How? The dough from Riker as well? Uh... Yeah, that's okay. You're a joker, you know that? Hey, should I lend you something, Doc? I just got myself nearly dead free here. All right, already. It's okay with me, damn it. But if you don't pay... Then I got a lot more trouble, right? Right. I've got to go. I'll come back again sometime. Completely soaked. I think I'll have to tell Mr. Flynn. Hopefully I can get some sleep in the next few days. If only these goddamn dreams would stop. No, I can't sleep yet. Evening, Mr. Flynn. Good morning, sir. What? Oh, <laughs> it's late, isn't it? Excuse me. I hear a letter has arrived for me. Yes, sir. Just a moment. Here. Thank you. But that's my... What's this, then? Can't be true. That goddamn sir. What? Could you please be a little quieter? It is one in the morning. So you want to know what loud is? This thing here's loud. Please put the weapon down, Mr. McNamara. So you can call the police again? If there's a problem, I'm sure we can discuss it quietly, but not like this. <sighs> Damn it. You're right. I'm sorry. I simply can't go on anymore. Is there anything I can do for you? It's only uh, because of the letter, you know. I understand. Yeah, just call the cops. It's probably better. No, don't worry. But maybe you can consider the bill, sir? Is there still time? Till first thing in the morning, perhaps, sir. But then I do have to inform the manager. First thing? Oh, it's going to be difficult early morning. Okay, here's an idea. About the bill. Here, look, um, how would it be with this? A very nice ring. Sure, it's my wedding ring. Your wedding ring? I can't accept it, sir. It's worth 5,000 bucks. I'd ought to pay the bill twice. It's not our customary policy to take items in payment. Uh, certainly not such personal ones. <sighs> yeah, I don't need the ring anymore. So, what's the problem? Sir, I don't know if... I don't have anything else. Just take it and settle the bill. Very well, sir. I'll put it in the safe. Okay. That's all right, then. I'm tired. I've got to go. See you later. Have a good day, sir. Damn. It's not working anymore. I'll have to dry it out. <laughs> 